Mountain Regional Learning Consortium. And uh, we, you've already met Wanda Deschant, and she's from the Calgary Regional Learning Consortium. And she is helping us with our tech needs today. So if you are having any issues with your audio or visual, please uh, type in the chat box to Wanda and she can definitely help you. And so uh, before we start, we would like uh, to introduce the two speakers from ADLC today. We are joined by Carla Montgomery and Trista Duell. Trista has been with the technology department for ADLC for approximately 11 years, providing Moodle and Sys application support. And Carla Montgomery has been the science department head and a chemistry 20 teacher as well for the last 11 years. And so uh, without further ado, uh, Carla, I'll let you take over. Okay, thank you, Susan. Um, so today what we're going to be going over is just kind of an introduction into uh, ADLC in the TS world and joining into those resources and using those resources. So one thing I just want to point out is that our resources are designed to deliver the full curriculum. Uh, so you may find that there's too much information because with the continuity to education plan, we need to pare down to just our prioritized outcomes. So there's going to be a little bit of streamlining that you'll need to do based on those prioritized outcomes. But there's lots and lots of great bits and pieces that you can pull out, videos, assessments, um, interactive labs. So there's lots and lots of information that you can have there that you can use with your students. Uh, and we understand that a lot of these resources may not be exactly how you would um, you would present information because every teacher in every classroom is slightly different. So you may look at something and say that's not quite how I present it. I think I'm going to use my own resources for that. Whereas you might find um, another piece of information or a lab or a video and you go that's perfect this quiz this is awesome I'm going to direct my students to do that part so we understand there's gonna be a little bit of give and take and and that's fine that's like with any resource sharing there's always going to be that little bit of streamlining um, and I, I see that Kim asked a question about prioritized outcomes and there hasn't been any guidelines beyond just the minister did say that because of the reduced hours that they understand that not all subjects or outcomes can be covered and it's kind of based on the teacher's professional judgment what's going to be prioritized for their students. Um, I'm a chemistry 20 teacher so I would for me I'd look at a lot of the outcomes and see what pulls us in to that 30 level and what they would need to know um, for that. That's, that's how I would look at it. Um, you said only the fun stuff. Absolutely. If my kid in grade five was pulling on the fun stuff and enjoying instead of he's crying every day right now, but that's just his personality. So as an educator, you need to see what, what you think those prioritized outcomes are for your student to make sure that the, the learning can continue for them. Okay, I'm going to do a little screen share. Maybe. Okay, so this is the uh, PowerPoint presentation. So there's going to be a bit.ly put into the chat so that you can actually come right into this um, presentation. And then if you keep the, uh, the bit.ly, then you can access the presentation at any time in the future too. So our contact information is there. So I'm Carla Montgomery and we have Trista Duell. We also have the general email that goes to our partner support team that can answer all your general uh, CIS questions and getting teachers set up and all that. We also have the toll-free number with our partner support extension and then the bit.ly is here which doesn't help you unless you actually have the bit.ly. Uh, so what we're going to be covering today is how to sign up a super user. So the super user is essential for making sure all of the other teachers and students get enrolled. We're going to go over how to add those um, users and that means both teachers and students. Creating sections, enrolling students, and Trist is going to cover all that and then I'm going to go into once you do have that resource on your Moodle dashboard, 
Um, how do you go about navigating there? And what are some of the key things that you can, that can get you going right away in the course? And then tomorrow we are running a more advanced session where we look at some of the Moodle resources a little bit more in depth. So you don't have to worry about madly writing down everything that Trista is trying to um, show on here. We do have all of this on our ADLC website and the key places are gonna be where it says COVID-19, Moodle SIS help and Moodle training resources. And so if you go to our website, right at the top here is where we can see that accessing ADLC resources, that's a good link. And then down here, Moodle and SIS help. And then specifically for what Trista is gonna be talking about for the super user and enrolling users, is in here we have all of these documents and videos that walk you through the steps of setting up your teachers, students, and sections. So with this, I'm gonna turn it over to Trista and she's gonna talk about the first step is making sure that your school has a super user. I'm gonna stop sharing now, Trista. Okay, I'm going to share my screen now here. So a super user is someone at your school. Usually a lot of our what we call partner schools, which is the schools where you guys are, um, already have a super user because this has been going on for a few weeks now. Um, if you, your school does, does have one, it's usually, not always, but it's usually someone in the admin office, the same person who would... Um, enroll students into your own classroom like into the actual physical class you know when you do class changes and scheduling and stuff uh, sets up your students in power school that sort of person is most common the super user sometimes it's also the person who is responsible for a distance education room you know somebody wants to take an extra class or one that's scheduling conflicts that sort of person is usually the super user if you have no idea who the super user is for your school you can also uh, talk to your principal they might know um, if you do not have one at your school if you've not contacted ADLC before to access our resources or to enroll a student in an ADLC talk course, um, you would fill out the form that I'm sharing here now. Uh, you would, it's just on the ADLC website. It's under courses and registration and then under forms and uh, super user request. And you would fill out the, the information. You only want one, two averages two people at each school to be a super user. We do not give super user access to all teachers. To access the resources, you do not have to be a super user. You simply have to have a super user to set up your teachers to have the access and to enroll students if, if that's what you decide to do with our resources. So once this form is filled out and you submit it, it goes to our partner support staff that Carla mentioned before um, and they usually contact the principal uh, in this form is listed and they just verify that this is okay if this person has access to reset passwords, to enroll students, to set up teacher accounts, to create sections for your school. Most of the time the person who fills this out is supposed to have that access, but we don't, it's just on the website, so we don't want to leave it open and automatically fill it out because what if it's a student who submits the form and pretends they're with the school because then they have access to some other information as well. Once you're a super user, you get a username and password that will give you access to our student information system, which is where you can um, enroll students in ADLC taught courses and what we call SI courses. But to access our material, you go to Moodle. I'll show you here. You go to the Moodle teacher support. This is also where your students would log in if you're doing a teacher support course and you go you log in with the username and password that you're given the same if you are a super user it would be the same password that you have from sis and once you're in here every teacher and super user has access to this course catalog page and this course catalog page is actually all of our courses there's 200 and 51 of our different courses. It is searchable. You can search by the course name, you can search by the course code, and you can see the course code includes the um, Alberta Ed course code number, or the department, SH is senior high, elementary junior high is EJ. So I, I had a school asking about that. There are 51 elementary junior high courses, and if you're like, oh, that's not, that's not enough, maybe I'll search EJ math. There you go, it's all the elementary, junior high mathematics courses. And then if you wanna look at the, what the materials are, you simply just click on it and it takes you into the course. 
Carlo go into this a little bit more, you go into the table of contents and you can see all the stuff that's available. But if you are a super user, you will also have a manage school tab. And when you click on the manage school tab, you would come in here. It has the name of your school. I just have a, a school set up just for this sort of purpose. You'll have the name of your school here. If you have more than one school tied to you, because some super users are the super user for the high school as well, perhaps maybe an outreach program or maybe an elementary school as well if you're a smaller community and you would choose your school that you want to work with at that time and from the drop down and then you just switch school and that would change the name here and then to add a user you would just click this button this is how you would add a teacher and by default we automatically have students as the access level to, to create a teacher you would simply just change that uh, we have default to student because again we don't want to accidentally assign a student to teacher access we'd rather have to go fix a teacher to a teacher access than change a student away from teachers and once you select that you have your um, school listed here if you have more than one you'll have more than one option if you want to remove it you just click the x or add a different school from there you will type in this Username, you can use the same usernames that you use at your school, um, the same format, you know, maybe you use first initial last name or number, you know, J Smith 25 or, or whatever, or first name, last name, you know, Archie Andrews. This number in the front here will actually be, and the, and the dash, will become part of the login name. This is just so each school will have a system generated number here. It's a system assigned system number. It doesn't really make sense. It's not your school code or anything. And the dash, which, and then will become part of the username. So if I have a, like I said, a J Smith 25 at my school, and you have a J Smith 25 at your school, they'll have different numbers so we can still use the same username or same format and once you type that in you can you it has to be all lowercase letters it can include a period as you can see in my example there it can include a dash or a space um, it can and numbers it cannot include punctuation like an apostrophe it will not allow that or capital letters and then the next one is password we recommend you select it to generate um, password and notify the user it sends an email with the login information to the uh, person you're setting up if you type an email address or password in it does not send the email to them we also recommend that you uh, force the password change which automatically happens when you do this uh, just then they can pick one of their own because system generated ones are never easy to remember and then you type their first name their last name and their email address in here And it has to be a unique email address. One student, uh, one user, sorry, one user, teacher or whatever, cannot have the same email address as a different one. You can't have all the kids in your class have your email address. It won't work. You have to have unique email addresses for each user. So once you enter those fields, the access is already filled out by default, but you can change it. Your make sure the school's right, enter the username, generate a password as a preference, enter the user first name and last name you scroll down to the bottom and you create user and this will like I said if you generate password it will send an email to the person at that time telling them they have access and if you're just creating a teacher account that's all you need to do um, and then the teacher can go in and access all their print materials uh, look at the stuff online save the PDF files if they want to keep them that way if they want to use those with their school you know they can view all of our stuff if you do decide that you want to have your students registered in a copy of the course that you teach. In other words, you want the student to interact with the course. Um, maybe you like one of the high school science labs. I know Carla's course has some interesting ones where they can actually do a virtual, virtual chemistry labs. Maybe you really want one of your students to do just the one lab. Maybe you only like the one lab and then you send them the username and password and the link to log into the course or you want them to do a whole section of the course, you would, to do that, you would add a section, as the super user would, pardon me, would add a section. You find it looks very similar to the self-serve page there, and you create one. You know, we got CTS courses as well, and when you find it, you click on the name of the course, and you select, the super user would select the teacher, whichever teacher they want. Um, the course start date is always by default today's date. I've never seen any reason to change that, but you could set it into a future date if you want. 
The allow students to self enroll using an enrollment key is always checked by default and then it generates a system created enrollment key. Um, this, even if it's checked off, you do not have to use it. You can enroll students, which I will show in a moment how to manually enroll students into uh, courses, into sections, as they're sometimes referred to. But if you do it this way, if you want to use the enrollment key, which I know some school divisions have, is the teacher would send a link to their students who have had their account set up. They have to have an account set up. Send a link to the course, to the student, and this information. And when the student logs in and they you know, click the link that the teacher sent them, it'll ask them to enroll and they would then enter the enrollment key that the teacher provided to them. And this is editable, editable. You know, you can change it to whatever you want and then click create section. And when you create a section, it will then put this, I'm not gonna create one because then we have to wait for it to create. I've already created some. Um, if you go in here under manage sections, you can see all of this sections that your school has set up and also you can see on the enrollment key we've added this just this weekend is listed right here the super user can see all the enrollment keys so if you know somebody's phoning from you know someone who wanted to get into chemistry 20 but they don't know what the enrollment key is the teacher the super user can see it and copy it there the information when the course is finished cloning which is what we call our copying process when we create a copy of your of these courses for your school uh, an email is sent to the super user letting them know they can start enrolling students. Um, it's sent to the teacher to let them know that they have their own course. And in that email, it also includes this enrollment key if it's checked off to active. Again, you don't have to use it if you get it, but you can use it. We kind of recommend it more for high school students than elementary just because it's another step for elementary students to do. And this is already quite a different thing for them. But if you're manually enrolling your students, you would go into the course with the little gear and you would click edit. And this is also where you can change the teacher. If you decide, you know, actually this teacher should be having this section be the main teacher, but you know, John's going to help. He's going to help with marking. And if I decide I want to allow the enrollment key, I could set it up. If I decide I don't want to, I can uncheck it at that point as well. To enroll a student, you come down to the drop down and you can search. And then just click on it and then you enroll, select, add selected students. And you can see that she's enrolled. And if for you enroll a student into the wrong course, for example, you could just click the little delete button over here, little icon to unenroll, and it would remove the student if you'd enrolled them in the wrong course. And then when the student logs in with the username and password that they were given, they will see the link to the course right on their home page. They don't have to, again, enter that enrollment key if they're enrolled, like I just done with the Minnie Mouse character there, with as the super user. If they do that, the self-enrollment step isn't needed. Um, there are ways to bulk upload users. I'm not gonna go over those steps. Um, there's a document on how to do so. Um, it, you could take a CSV file from PowerSchool or whatever your, um, your student information system and your uh, at your school is and bulk upload them in there. It can be teachers, it can be students, you can bulk add them all that way. I know there's quite a few schools that have done that, especially with their teachers, just to get them all in there so they can access all our resources. And there's also a way you can use the bulk, uh, the upload users, once you have the users, you use the same interface and you can bulk upload students, super users can bulk upload students into the sections once they've been created. So. It's Moodle has a, a little different access than our SIS does. Previously, historically, you know, last semester, you would have had to add each student individually. So now you no longer have to. But that is basically what a super user does. They, they create teacher accounts so that teachers can access this course catalog page and view all of our content. If a teacher wants a copy of our, one of our courses that they want their students to interact with on the computer to actually touch, you know, with the mouse clicking on stuff and things, then they would have to um, have uh, the super user create them a copy of the course, create a section, and then they can enroll the students or they can provide this, um, then the email will provide the enrollment key if that's the method you want to use. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen here, Carla, and I will give it back to you. 
Okay, perfect. Um, there's a couple of people asking in the chat about who their super, if they have a super user and who their super user is. So I did respond to the one, but all you need to do is to let, um, so if you're asking, if you want Trista to look this up, if you have a super user, just provide her with what school, the school name you're at as well. And then she can look up the information and send it to you. Yes, Trista? Yeah, I can do that. Or if like, if it's later and you're coming back to this because you think you know who it is, you can also send an email to info at adlc.ca and they can look it up for you at partner support for sure. Yeah. But yes, I do see a question and Susan is right. You do have to have a, uh, you do have to have a super user in order to get access. That's the first step you have to do. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to do a screen share again. All right, so that was a lot of information to take in and and that's I think what students are feeling right now too with this trying to switch to uh, to online learning and all the teachers trying to turn, you know change into the online learning world. So you, you don't have to remember and memorize anything she said there's all documentation and we're also here to help you as much as you need. So again, if you've got this bitly. First step is to figure out if you have a super user at your school and like I said, we can look it up for you. Um, if you don't have a super user, then it's easy and the link is right there. So with the bit.ly, you just come to this page, click on this link, and then that'll take you to the form to fill out. So that's the first thing. You can have more than one super user. We just don't want a ton of super users. Uh, we just want to limit it, makes it easier for, for um, all the processes. So why you need the super user is that the super user is gonna be the one that, that gives you access. So enrolls you as a teacher and then would also enroll your students. The super user would also be the one who creates sections and I'll review why you'd want a section created. And the super user also is the one that enrolls the students. Now that seems like a big job for the super user, but with some of those bulk, bulk upload options, it's really quick to do. Um, at Barhead Comp, that's where my husband teaches, and they have one lady who's a super user, and she, man, she's got all the kids in all the courses, you know, right away. So it, it is manageable, um, but if you have a big school, you may want to see if your school can have two super users and just kind of lighten that load. <clears throat> so the super user can enroll students. Okay, so how can students get enrolled? So if you want your students interacting with the content, um, the super user can either enroll them so that they would go through the process and enroll them in there, but there's also a method where the students will get emailed a link and enrollment key, and then they can enter the classroom with that key. We have documentation for both of those on our website. Um, so this would just show you the video about how to do that. So that's what that link takes you to. So once you have decided that you want to have access to the courses, what you need to do is then contact your super user. They'll enroll you as a teacher and with you just being enrolled, you have view only access to all of our resources. So what does view only access get you? So I'm just going to uh, quickly close these down. This is what we call the marker dashboard so that if you do get sections created and you do have your students interacting and submitting work, you will have a dashboard where you can have quick links to all the assignments that get submitted to you for grading. So this is what we'd call the marker dashboard. The only thing that's active is when there's a student submitted something, then you can click on the link. I'm not going to show you that because this is a live server with actual student data, so I don't want um, any of the names or anything to, to show up. So if you haven't had sections created for you to teach, then you won't have a marker dashboard yet. But you, what you should have is this TS section. So I have been speaking with a few um, teachers that don't have this. So they have an account, they log in and they don't see this. There's some kind of problem going on. Contact us. Uh, it could be that the super user forgot to change you from a student to a teacher. Obviously students can't see this TS server so um, they that that just might have happened. There could be some little glitch in your profile. It could just be taking a little bit longer to build but if you don't see this, something's up let us know, we can fix it for you. 
So in here, you can see any course you want and go through the content. Uh, I'm gonna pull up something. I'm gonna pull up Science 8 because that's uh, my daughter's in Science 8. So let's see what, and I don't have edit access. So I wanna show you what you see when you don't have edit access. So Science 8 here, if I click on it, I'm gonna be able to view everything. I'm not gonna be able to edit and my students aren't gonna be able to view this either. Um, so if it's something where I wanna pull out some assessments um, and use that for my students, if I'm like, I need print stuff, my students don't have very good internet, so I want to have the PDFs and the print resources, you can easily find that. So uh, some of the orientation that we see when we come to our main page is that across the top we have these navigation blocks. We also have our menu here where we can dock and undock kind of our menu. I always like to keep it docked because I find it confusing if I have too many blocks open. Under the resources button and if you enroll students they also have these resources there are help files and those help files are in video and PDF form. So let's say you decided to get a section created and enroll your students in it and have your students do some of the assessments that use the quiz tool and you want to make sure they know how to navigate in a quiz you can direct them to watch this video and all of the videos that are here are quick like they're under three minutes uh, Joseph does an awesome job of um, keeping them entertaining and quick and moving and and uh, and informative and but you can also just come here and uh, and see how any of the any of these objects function in the course. The other thing is that under my teacher is where your information would be. But the other key thing that's used I use a lot is under the content here because this is our home landing page where we can access any of the units directly. But I find it very useful to come over here and I direct my students here all the time as well to the table of contents. And so this kind of lays everything out for your students or yourself about how to navigate through the course. So how our TSs are set up, and almost all of them are set up this way, is that we have the emerging of the online and the print course. So what we have first is all of this online content. And we can see by the uh, icon that we have pages that have content. These are just checklists, so the students uh, in this course, it's set up, it, it really lays out what they need to do in each, um, each unit or each section. With a hand, that's a, uh, where students hand in PDFs of their assignments, and then the check mark is where the online quiz tool is used. So all of these sections at the beginning are gonna be the online content. So if you wanted the student to interact with the online content, then you would need to get them, you'd need to get a section created and then you would need to have your students enrolled. But if we keep scrolling to the bottom of the online content, we also have the print course, the print resources. So maybe your students aren't going to have the capability to go into an online environment for whatever reason, maybe they're rural, they don't have the internet access uh, or anything like that. So what we can do then is from here, we have PDFs. So these are just the different units, the five units, PDF. You can just click on it and download it. And then you could take that whole PDF and pop it into your, let's say your Google Classroom. And then the students, you could direct them. You could say, um, today I want you to open up this PDF and I want you to read you know, pages 99 to 103 or whatever the pages are. Some of our print resources are just the Learn Alberta print resources. Some are updated new print resources. Uh, our courses, our online courses are all new, newer updated courses. But with read-only access, you can look at all the content. So you could go into any of the content pages and you can also then download any of the print resources which could be either the, those were the modules, so the content, or it can be the assignment booklets 
So these are what your students would answer the questions and submit into you. As well, after the print resources for the student, so online content, print resources, there is a teacher resource section, and this is where you will find exams, so they're secure, and answer keys, so they're secure. You'll notice that these are kind of grayed out, and it says here, hidden from students. So our um, uh, secure materials have that hidden option. Now I just lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, teacher support information. <coughs> Sorry. Um, on our TS courses, there is a section, a page at the bottom in teacher resources where you can see the teacher support information. If you click there, I've had a bad cough for like two weeks, but I don't have a fever, so I'm, I think I'm okay. Uh, so on here, on this page, you're going to find a welcome letter, the errata sheet, links to our documentation, and then a curriculum map. I'm just going to take a drink of water. Well, of course, I have to have a cough when we're recording these sessions, right? So on the TS welcome letter, this is where the teacher kind of gives you an outline of what the course is built around and how it's built um, and any nuances that you need to know for that course. If you're showing that, Carla, we can't see it. We just see the table of contents. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, I've been showing you lots of stuff. <laughs> <coughs> Thanks for letting me know. Here, let me click there now. There we go. There we go. All right, thanks. Well, before you go on, if I can just interrupt you, uh, there's a question from Kim. Can we enroll all of our students so that they have access to the supplementary material? Yeah, if you have a section created, then your students can be enrolled and it can be kind of that go-to. Um, that's, that's something I can really envision, a resource like this in your classroom. So my husband um, teaches science 30, physics 20, and he has access to the resources. Now he's taught for many years, and so he's got lots of good materials that he's handing out to his students, but then he'll come across a video, or especially some of our interactive labs, and he'll say, oh, this is perfect. Uh, and then he'll direct his students to that one part of the course, and his students, they all have their own logins, they are registered, then they'll just go in and they can perform that lab or watch that video or answer the quiz questions. So it's, it's a really, it can be something that you can use in and of itself and direct the students day to day what you want them doing. Or it can be that every now and then you add it as part of your teaching. Um, okay, the welcome letter. Oh, right, that's what I did because I clicked on the welcome letter and then it's hidden behind this panel that I want to see, but I can't. So well, let me come over here. Click there. Okay, so this is what the welcome letter will look like in all the TS courses um, where they give the information like uh, the teacher here has really broken down what the course is composed of. Um, it should also give you the, the lead teacher, their contact information. So if you are using the course, looking through the resource and you have questions about something, absolutely contact the lead teacher and they'll be able to give you um, more information about how to use the resource or if there's um, a trick or a tip to using that. So that would be the read only. That's the kind of access you'd have. Uh, really the only thing you can kind of incorporate in is going to be uh, the PDFs, but you can use this as a resource. So um, one comment I heard from a teacher, they were like, oh, you know, in science, I love labs. Is there a way they could do labs at home? And actually in this, this science course, there are quite a few labs that are using household materials. So that's a way too that you could, as a teacher, look through, find resources that you like in here. Even if it's something like, this is a YouTube video, 
that link you could absolutely pop out to your well this was apropos that I came to this this was not planned that I came to a, a page on um, polio it's interesting uh, but any YouTube videos you could grab that link and just pop it into your Google classroom and let the students know that you want them to watch this video so this really has a good um, curation of materials and resources that you can use outside of um, outside of, of Moodle. If I look at this tasks that they have here, we can see that there's try it activities and a lot of those try it activities are ones that you can do in, with household materials. So that's just one resource. Oh, okay. So if you do decide, if you're looking at a resource, you, you get your access, you're looking at this resource and you go, wow, I can really see how there's assessments here that I could use with my students. There's videos, there's interactives. I really want to incorporate some of this so my students can interact with this material. That's when you'd get your super user to sign you up as a teacher and make, or sorry, get, make a section for you. So you have your own copy and then you have edit access and then you can also get students enrolled in it. So if we go back to the Moodle homepage, you would then get this lovely marker dashboard that tells you um, all the marking you need to do. Um, and then, but below that, below all that, and then below the self-service, this is where you're gonna find your course access to courses or sections that you have created that you now have editing control over and that your students could be um, enrolled in and then your students could interact with the material. So I'm just gonna pop into the chemistry course. That's the one that I have. And then what's interesting is that we now all of a sudden have this editing. And if we turn the editing on by clicking on the pencil, then it gives us um, access to go in and delete information, add information, um, and streamline the course, anything you want to do to the course really. Another interesting thing you can add then is a course search feature. It's a block and you can add blocks down at the bottom over here. There's gonna be where you can add blocks. Well, why did we go back here? Anyways. So this, this block I find very interesting because you can now search the course. And once you have those outcomes that you want the student to cover, so maybe you're like, um, we haven't in class talked about parts per million. I wonder where parts per million are discussed in this course. And then it tells you, it directs you exactly where you need to go to ensure that your students are covering those outcomes. Um, for the, once you have your own section created and you can edit it, Again, the table of contents is a great place to go. You can turn the editing on. And then you're gonna see that you've got these edit buttons on the side. So if I had students coming in partway through the course, a good thing I might wanna do for right now is say, oh, we've all already finished unit A. I'm actually gonna hide that for my students because I don't want them to be overwhelmed with all of this material. So right now I've hidden unit A, so students wouldn't be distracted by that. Maybe when you're doing some of your prioritizing your outcomes, you might come to one content page and you'll say, oh, we, um, we, that's not gonna be a prioritized outcome. We have to streamline our course. So I'm gonna hide this one page and not worry about covering this material. So you can hide page by page. I'm gonna just come up and unhide this because uh, this is an active uh, TSM, so if someone was cloning this right now, then it would clone, I think, hidden for them, which might be a problem. Okay. So why you'd want to enroll your students is that there are um, assessments using the quiz tool that you need the students to come into the course if you want them to answer the quiz questions. Some of these quizzes are gonna be auto-graded, some of them have teacher grading, and we'll look a little bit more in detail um, when we, uh, tomorrow, with that process. 
most of the content pages from all the courses is kind of set up the same where you have the an introduction to this for the concept you have the key concepts covered you're going to have videos that are interspersed within and they could be adlc created they could be youtube links and then there's usually practice questions that have answers Okay, so this just gives you a visual clue if you come back to this link. And so I'm just going to click through it um, about all the stuff that we've covered so far. So up to hiding units. So how I can envision this happening is that, uh, again, you probably wouldn't want to just let your students loose to keep going through the course because, again, the re our resources are designed to hit grade level for the full um, curriculum. So how I can kind of envision a teacher using our resource is linking it into their own Google Classroom. So they may just have their daily schedule and I have my cousin, she showed me her stuff and she had it with um, Google Slides. I thought that was awesome. I just quickly threw together just a Google Doc. So you would direct your students every day on what to do. And it might not always link to your ADLC resource. Um, but it might, it might lead them in. So on Monday, what were we going to do on Monday? Right, so the topic is solubility. That's we were starting unit C and I want them to do a pre-assessment so I know what kind of information they already have and I just provided a link. So then the student can come in here and just click on that link and it takes them right to the page I want them to, to do and then they could come in and do the assessment. Maybe I want them to read content. So I've told them I need, you need to read lessons one to four. So this is the link where I've got them started. They're gonna start with lesson one and they're going to read each of the pages from lessons one till four. I might also give them a quick video in here that's outside of, of the uh, ADLC Moodle course. And it might just be me instructing them because I'm like, oh, I kind of think I would like my students to use this process. And so I just supplemented that content. Maybe I'm going to put in a bunch of quick two minute videos to introduce each of these concepts and examples for my students. And then I want them to work on examples from the Moodle course. So there's, there's lots, maybe I'm going to have a Google Meet and we'll, we'll discuss. So there's lots of ways you can pull in pieces from the uh, Moodle resource. Okay, oh right, this is uh, another resource that we have is located just on our website. So you don't even have to be registered as a user or anything, it is open. <coughs> and it's called Preview Review. So the link is in that PowerPoint. And these are all downloadable. So for grades four, five, and six, there's just language arts and math. And then for grades seven, eight, and nine, they do have all the cores. So what these resources were originally built for was for if a student finished grade four, but wasn't at grade level and the parents and teacher were kind of like, you know, if you did a little bit of work over the summer, we might bring you up to grade level. Or if you had a student struggling, you could give them this material that they could work on to, during the year. Or it does kind of just limit the outcomes to some more focused outcomes. So if you wanted, let's say you taught grade four math and you want just some PDF, these are just PDF documents to send to my students to work on. So each of these PDFs, um, you can download and then the keys are provided as well. So again, you could just take this PDF and then take it and put it in your Google Classroom, ask your students to download it and they could interact with this content and assessments. Carla, I have a quick question. Is there anything similar to preview review for grades one to three? No, we only have the preview review for grades four and up. 
So we do have our print resources for grades one to three, and they would just be the full curriculum. And you would just have to use your professional judgment about which parts of the course that you would need the students to complete. Good question. So we, um, these are some of the things that we would be covering tomorrow is looking a little more detailed. So if you are going to use uh, the enroll your students, um, how would you go about grading a quiz? Uh, how would you go about marking a PDF? Uh, a little bit about in creating your own instructional videos because right now I've been hearing from some teachers just the overwhelming amount of people uploading videos makes the upload times really long. So there's a few other programs or processes you can use to kind of do some shortcuts to, to speed it up. Like I was making instructional videos from a, a couple of students today and you know I would make a two minute video and it would take maybe five minutes to upload it and then I could send it out to them. We'll look at editing Moodle pages. So those pages might be too much information because you've streamlined it. So show you how you could take away some of the content and then some tools about teaching, you know, in a live synchronous environment. Um, so that's all of kind of the formal presentation, but we got lots of time. If you have questions, if you want to see specific courses, if you want to know about some of that extra information that I'm going to be covering tomorrow and you want to just see a little bit of that, we can do that. So it's completely open to where you guys want to take this session now. Okay, so as Carla said, if you have any questions right now, uh, please type them in the chat box. Uh, how about grade seven science, please? Sure, let me just pull that up. Uh, let me escape. And while she's doing that, um, not sure if it was question from Kim, but she says we'll need to learn more about the Moodle. So um, maybe Trista or Carla, if you want to take that question about what exactly is Moodle? Yeah, good question. And I, darn it, that's on my other presentation and I was gonna move it over to this one, but my day got away from me. It was so busy with my students. Um, so Moodle is just a learning management system. So this is where students, or this is where teachers put content and um, assessments uh, for their students. So another comparable one would be even a Google Classroom is a learning management system. So you can put uh, content on there, you can put uh, assessments on there, and that's how your student would go and get their information. Uh, D2L is another learning management system. Um, Canvas is a learning management system. So, so that's all Moodle is, is just a specific platform that ADLC uses. Um, and there's lots of schools and sc school jurisdictions that use Moodle. You don't have to have Moodle um, at your school to access ours. We host everything on our server. So you don't have to worry about having um, your tech guys. You don't have to worry about paying for server space or anything like that. All you have to do is sign up. Everything's free. We look after all the technical stuff for you. Okay, so I see that you're showing the preview for Science 7. Yep, yeah. Oh, and so was it the um, course, the our Moodle course or the preview review? M our Moodle course, right? Yes. Uh, I just said, how about Science 7, Grade yeah. 7 Science? Yeah, we'll go with this one. So okay. this was designed, so Science 7 and 8 were designed by the actually the, the same teacher. So they have the very similar um, feel and setup to it. And again, you're going to have all of these um, content pages at the beginning. And then if you prefer to have the students having PDFs, and there's lots of reasons, you know, good reasons to have one or the other or both learning systems, that's fine. So there are, like I said, the print resources down here. Um, but for Science 7, uh, let's say we're at heat and temperature. All right, so the the setup is usually the same. They're going to be introduced to the to the concepts. There's a little pre-assessment. Um, there's lots of individual documents that the students can download uh, throughout the course. So they are. Um, this one is just a little quick and easy pre-assessment, just so the students can know where they're at. But if you're like, oh, we're not going to worry about pre-assessments, then you can not worry about something like that. You could either hide the page or you could 
um, just once again, if you had a Google Classroom, not linked to this page. Or maybe you're saying, yes, this is perfect. I love this. I want to use it. Um, most lessons start with a video. So this is really good for those readers because it's hard sometimes on these pages for um, our little darlings to read all this and absorb it in their head. Uh, a lot of times I'll use read aloud, like there is the, up here, there is, you know, the extension, the Google read and write. I actually like read aloud. I find the cadence and delivery from that voice better than the read and write. So my kids right now with their home learning, they use that a lot too, because it's just can be overwhelming to kids to read all, all of this, but there is introductory videos. They're, they're quite good. Okay. Um, can uh, Liza wants to know, can I copy ADLC videos to Google Classroom? Uh, that's a great question. And um, if, no, actually, no, you can't. Um, they, we have a separate server that we host them in and they just, they aren't released. So you can, by all means, um, if your students are enrolled, they can just go to that page and watch the video. If it's a link to an external source, then you can. So most of our video, or a lot of our videos, depending upon how the teacher has designed the course, they're gonna be embedded. So if I did a right click and I'm looking for the link for this, it's go the link's gonna start with um, Moodle at the beginning. And then I know that it's an embedded video and I can't just grab it and put it out. Uh, I know for my Chem 20, I've done all my videos as links. Um, so you can grab the link and put it into your Google Classroom and it would not come back to Moodle, but it would go to our server. But this, this one that can't. Okay, uh, Megan is asking, can you quickly show me again how to add a Classroom TS self-service to my courses? But because I'm sending um, a copy of this recording, um, we'll just wait until last to answer that one, uh, just so that we get some of the other questions in, because all the participants will be sent a recording of this so they can play back um, the, how you um, covered that in the beginning. Uh, There's Jumana. also a video on the ADLC website for that as well. Okay, thanks. Um, Kim is asking, okay, so we are to use Google Classroom, so I won't worry about the Moodle right now at this point. Um, Carolyn says, heat and temperature as a link. I'm not sure what that question's asking. Okay. Uh, okay, I think that's it for questions. So we still have, uh, oops, there's another one. Uh, where can we find the recording of the webinar? Oh, we will send it to you in an email. And that probably won't be till tomorrow. Okay. But um, you can go to our website and that's where you will find the video recording. Or really sorry, the, the bottom of the stairway that I found. I didn't know what I was looking <laughs> That's where you'll find um, the videos. Where am I looking for? Oh, one more down. Okay. Is that the one I'm looking for? No. See, if I go to the home page, I know where it is. Um, no, that's not it either. Where am I looking on there? Just go to contact us. Way over, way over. Not about us, contact us. Oh, technical help. And there we Moodle. go. Yeah. So yeah, so here, this is where all the videos and documentation that walks you step by step through adding users, creating TS sections, adding and editing teachers, enrolling students. So all of that is covered on, in our, in our um, documents and videos on our website. Okay, um, Kim just said, my super user just told me kids can't access materials and be enrolled unless admin gives permission to enroll in those courses. 
that's up to the school divisions. We have nothing stopping it, but that's up to your school if they want to. You may want to tell them that there is uh, there is no fee for that if they want to enroll students in. That's so that's up to the school though for that decision, of course. But there is no fees. There's no you guys still do the reporting to Passy. If it's a high school course, if it's junior high, well, you guys keep track of your own grades for that as well. But we don't do anything except give you the materials and a place for you and your students to do it. We don't do any of the marking or anything like that. So if that's what he's concerned about, we don't do any of the funding, any of the anything like that. That's all you guys. We just give you the materials and the online course if you choose to create one. Right. And as Carla mentioned earlier, I think it's also important to recognize um, that these courses were designed to be full year courses or full semester courses. So obviously, depending on what you've already covered, you would have to be a little bit discerning about what you're um, putting in there, because it would be inappropriate for you to just take a, take a, a section and just plop it in there. Um, because definitely students would need some scaffolding and some additional supports because we have to remember that they are also transitioning to an online environment, learning environment as well as teachers. Kim, I see your question about, uh, it might look like they're enrolled twice. This school enrollment, or this course enrollment, sorry, this course enrollment, if you enroll them through um, Moodle, only through Moodle, it doesn't touch passing in any way, shape, or form. Form. If you use the old system, which would have been in place in the fall, it only sends a school enrollment. There's no course enrollment sent to PASI. We have no contact with PASI in regards to that at all. We don't have any information sent to PASI. It's just uh, materials for you guys and if your students, if you want them enrolled in there. We don't send that they've enrolled. We don't send they've been dropped, passed, anything. It's all sent from you guys. And um, someone else says here, can you give me a quick explanation? What is the difference between SIS training resources and Moodle training resources is? Um, for all of our online materials for you guys, it's basically, it's all done through um, Moodle. Um, if you do want to have a student enrolled in an ADLC taught course, like in Carla's chemistry course, for example, then you would enroll them through SIS. That's where you would access that. You would enroll them with print or online courses. And then we would, that course enrollment goes to PASI. Then we report grades and stuff. But if you're using the TS, it doesn't go to PASI. It's not at all connected. Our SIS system is connected. Yeah, and so I think that, like, it, it's absolutely up to your, your principal's discretion on how, how the students, you know, are enrolled and stuff like that. But there is some misunderstanding sometimes between ADLC's two roles. So we do teach students and we call that our SI, so student instruction. So I have students, I have 65 students who they come to me, I do all the marking, I do all the instructing. Um, I am the one that finalizes their mark, it gets sent to PASI, and then there is um, depending upon how the school is funded, there is a funding split, um, 44, 56, something like that. I'm, I don't know, that's above my pay grade. I just have to teach students. Um, so there is some schools, if you are block funded, then it doesn't affect your funding. But if you are credit funded, then you are, if you enroll them in SI, then your school would be getting less funding. That That's not to do with us and the fee, just how, how Alberta Education distributes their money. It, for TS, and that's what we're talking about now, we're just giving you the resource. It would be no different than you ordering a textbook, you ordering, well, except textbooks would cost you money, um, or you going to the Learn Alberta site and taking some of their materials. It's no different from that. So I think sometimes there's a little bit of a misunderstanding between the two worlds and roles that ADLC has. Okay, we've got two more minutes. So if anyone has any final questions, uh, please let us know. Uh, Heather is asking, did Alberta Education at one point this spring cut funding to ADLC? And if so, has it been reinstated? Um, <laughs> there, there, has, there was an announcement um, that they were renewing our service agreement for two years and there's been no reversal on that decision. Um, Trish would like to, uh, I'm sorry, uh, from Carolyn, what is the session tomorrow about? So the session tomorrow is going to be more so about diving in a little bit more about how 
to in um, general terms teach online and then also in more specific terms how you could use um, an ADLC like how you can do some more work in ADLC so it's kind of like you've been enrolled you now have a section created so so what can you do with it so I'm going to kind of go over uh, specifics for Moodle so like going in and actually how can you edit um, a quiz. So if you wanted to modify a quiz for your students, kind of going over how you could do that. If you wanted to modify a page, how you could do that. Um, and then just some general things that I think about in my day to day, because I, I teach online and at a distance day to day, I kind of think, what do I do on a daily basis? What kind of tools and techniques do I use that helps me communicate asynchronously and synchronously with my students? And so I go over some of those um, like uh, marking a PDF, um, making a video, anything like that. Okay, uh, that session is tomorrow from 4 to 5 p.m. And I just put in the link if you'd like to register for it. And again, it's uh, after school. So if those of you are teaching, uh, it's from 4 to 5. Okay, well, we are just a little over five o'clock. So that concludes our webinar today. Thank you so much again to Carla Montgomery and Trista Duell. And we hope to see some of you at the advanced session tomorrow. And again, I put it up in the chat link, uh, the link to register if you're interested in joining us. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care. See you tomorrow. Bye.